Right, time for some mail bag video. Now I've got some things in here, I think maybe from Banggood. I'm not sure. They're going to send me something. I wasn't quite sure what it is. Um, so I'll probably find out as I go along. Um, okay, so let's reorganize this and get started. Okay, first thing. Let's see what's in here. Well, it's looking a bit scratched up and dusty. It's like it's been sitting around for a while. It almost looks like it's a used case. There's scratches on it. Broken clip. Really? Broken clip. So one clip's missing and it's all scratched up like it's been used. Wow. Okay, well this is from Banggood, right? This is one of the things that's on my wish list. So for some reason they give me something which has been kicking around for a while, looks of it. Um, so I have to say I'm not impressed by that, you know. There you go, look, there's a broken piece of clip there. You know, you expect something that's just brand new did not be all scratched up and come with a broken clip. Might have to uh, raise that as an issue and see if I can get that corrected. Although I've gone for nothing, you know, so I shouldn't really raise complain too much. Um, but you expect better than that. I think Banggood are normally pretty good. If you've got an issue, they'll sort it out for you. My understanding, anyway, I haven't actually had to go through that process with them. Even inside the case here is also broken. Just double check in the bag. So it was packed in the bag like that. Because the rest of the clip isn't there. And that piece which is broken isn't there. So that's broken before it went into the bag. And that's how it was sent. So a little notice for there for Banggood to... Um, have a word your packing guys about that. Because obviously you shouldn't be shipping stuff which is broken when they know it's broken when they put it in the bag. Right. Okay, next thing. Let's find out what this is. I'll be putting links in the description, I always do as well. Um, seem to be finding time to do it, so should be right. Right, so my um, recent video on the alarm system I was doing, I used some crimp down connectors. And that is basically what these are, except these are different ones. Let's just open one of these up. I've got these ones because they come in little boxes and I thought the little boxes would be handy. You know, once the connectors are gone, you've still got this little you know, compartment box, which would be good for little things. Um, let's just look at one of these, because these aren't exactly the same as one I already had, but it's very similar. The outside shape is the same. It's got detail on there for stripping. The lever action feels just as strong. So that feels like it's just as good, actually. It, it may just be have gone to translucent packing, for the translucent uh, material there. Because it's cheaper, to be honest. Putting the additives in actually makes the material more expensive to give the colour, give it the pigment. Pigment's actually one of the most expensive parts of the material, believe it or not. Anyway, uh, okay. Yep, yeah, so that's a nice, they look fine. And so I've got some two-way ones and I've got some three-way ones here. And these ones are like ones I used before, just the grey. So, yeah. The reaction's a little bit weak on this one, actually, which is interesting. But uh, it's probably still fine. I mean, it should still hold a wire, that's fine. I mean, they're pretty strong. Probably better than normal crimp, actually, to be honest. Right, that's that. Was. Okay, next thing. So I want to thank my uh, supporters as well, people have donated via PayPal or Patreon. Um, it's always good having that extra funding, it's not a lot of money, but um, 
it helps me to buy things like this for videos and to work on little projects and to pay for the disposal of all the packaging so this so you can see I've purchased two of these they're identical is a 12 volt power supply it's supposed to be 10 amps max it's also a switch mode but um, it's pretty small compared to the one I had before um, 10 amps max well continuous is probably going to be you know a third of that most likely so I'd probably feel more comfortable with, you know 5 amps um, so yeah it's supposed to fit any of these but, so live neutral plus or minus I can't see if it has a voltage adjustment yes it does I'm going to see through there's a voltage adjustment there we go slide that back and there it's just there so you can tune the voltage if you need to so it's got this little integrated cover there so you try and protect you from touching the terminals I and mean, that's quite good I suppose and it's got tab mounts so you can actually end in here too so you can actually mount it on a wall and just have the wires going in and um, that's not too bad I mean it would have been nice to actually have an end cover but um, I think that itself is not too bad is it because you've got the potential there for wires throw wires or maybe but unlikely but what about bugs crawling up in there and catching fire so anyway um, I might put these through the paces a bit later on might do a bit of video on those maybe thought they were nice and compact and you know they'll be good for little projects ok next thing So, it's a little, um, what is it called? I forgot what they're called now. They're high current DC connectors basically. They've got a name, I think what they are. It's got it's gone. Um, so, I've got a few of those that are coming handy if I'm doing some higher power DC connections. And um, a whole bunch of ribbons which are. Uh, male or female so if you need to plug into like an Arduino ball and stuff like that um, you can just do an extension you know just plug the thing in that's a nice strong connection actually I can't get the thing in there and let's try again here we go all right so nothing particularly special about those but I'll get a few of them just be Round, so I didn't have any. I, I used a bunch when I was using my alarm system. So I thought I'd save some more. We'll get some more. What the hell was that? I've forgotten. Think it is a battery ESR meter. Fortune notes in Chinese. Hey, oh, it's got a battery in it. Okay, so it uses a USB connector. No manual, as you kind of expect. So look at that, shall we? Zero. There we go. Okay. So it's four wire at least, which is good. Also comes with these. Um, other probes here with spare pogo pins. Pogo pins probes. Right. So and spare pins which is nice. If you bend one. 
So I need to find a battery to test. Hold on a sec. Hmm. Here you go, here's an old rechargeable battery which hasn't been charged in years. Um, let's see what this says. Oh, it's still got some power in it. 4.9 volts. 3.8 ohms, yeah, it could probably use charging up, couldn't it? So I think it's a Nike head actually. But yeah. So the idea that is to test batteries and see what internal resistance is, so it's good for like SLA batteries and stuff like that. That's the plan. And I got that from AliExpress, I think. Range R. Range U. This is those Pogrepin pros which have been um, heat shrink together. So the individual pros you put together like that so you can use them together at the same time. Fair enough. Dog magic trick, isn't it? Anyway. So I'll probably do some review video on this at some point. Um, just for my own usage, it's not really it's, it's not a review item as such. But um, I think I've got this because of the SLA battery issue, you know, just trying to see what's going on with them and I'll do some other stuff. I do have some other battery testers, um, the proper 12 volt car battery testers, you know, which give the uh, internal resistance and stuff like that. But uh, SLA batteries are a little bit small for those, really. So I thought I'd just try this, and it wasn't that expensive. Uh, I don't know it was, but it wasn't that expensive, that's why I bought it. So I thought it would be handy. Power off. Which one's yes? This one? No, that one. Yes. Okay. No, well, seems alright, doesn't it? Case is a bit generic, I suppose. Generic case. ABS. It feels alright. So, catch you later. Thanks for watching and remember to give. Click the like button, the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and click the bell icon if you haven't clicked that already. If the bell icon's got little lines around it, then you're going to receive notifications. If it doesn't have little lines around it, you won't receive notifications. So if I do a new video, you may not be told about it, and so you actually miss out on what I'm doing. Um, so make sure you click on that bell icon and make sure it's got little lines around it to show it's going to ring if you uh, if I post a video. That way you're actually monitoring what I'm doing, and you get to see the stuff as it comes out. So catch you later.